Welcome to a short excerpt from the Gale Hill Radio Hour featuring Frank Citullo, creator of OhioTraveler.com. In this section of his interview, Frank talks about the awe that people feel when they visit the John Rankin House in Ripley, Ohio, which was a stop on the Underground Railroad. The Rankin family gave refuge to more than 2,000 slaves who were making the arduous journey toward freedom. The Rankins were fierce protectors of all these individuals. You had posted a little preview about something that was going to be in Ohio Traveler. And it sounded so intriguing to me that I reached out to you and I said, well, can we do something about this? So thank you for going along with it. <laughs> I oh, of course. That. Some of the places that you find, these interesting places are profoundly interesting. So I'd like to start out with the one that I just mentioned. It really did catch my eye. It's the John Rankin House. Why is this place worth visiting? Well, it has, I mean, it's really a, a nondescript, uh, humble looking old home, like early 1800s built out of brick. Uh, it, there's really nothing to it except it sits on this huge hill, hillside above the Ohio River. So it has a really big history. John Rankin was a uh, reverend and he had like 13 kids. They were all ardent abolitionists and slave catchers would camp out trying to get people coming up to the house. And they moved something like 2,000 people to freedom through this little house from the Ohio River and never had anybody caught on their section of the Underground Railroad. Wow, that is incredible. And this, um, the John Rankin House is in Ripley, Ohio. Is that right? Correct. And yeah, it's not far from Cincinnati. Oh, okay. So not far from uh, your town. These, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, so, Cleveland's my hometown, but I've been down here for a while now. I guess I have to call this my hometown, too. Oh, well, yeah. A couple decades, you said, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so so how for how long have you been aware of the John Rankin House? Uh, probably about 10 years. My first time I went to it, my kids were really young and they're in their 20s now. So it had to be a while ago. Wow. OK, so. It, he he had a ministry. He had his church uh, for 44 years in this, uh, you know, Presbyterian church, and mm -hmm. and they were operating the underground uh, railroad for quite a while. And they were the family was one of the most active conductors on the underground yes. railroad. That's an incredible thing that he and his family did. Yeah, that's a lifetime of dedication for, you know, something they strongly believed in. And, you know, I, I can't imagine the reward one would feel in knowing that, you know, you took a slave, an escaped slave and their family. I mean, there's a story of uh, uh, I think one of the stories told there and they have great tour guides is uh, is it Harriet Beecher Stowe. And one of her stories talks about a woman who came across thin ice um, across the Ohio River to the John Rankin house. And there's a slave catcher laying in wait and seeing her dedication. He was so moved that he just let her through. Jeez. She, she was, did I say she had a baby oh. she, sliding a baby across the ice? Oh my God. Very delicately thinking it could break at any time. Oh my goodness. That just, doesn't it just give you chills reading? Yes, or I mean, hearing it? About, oh my gosh. She could fall through the ice with her baby and, and die, you know, because it, it was frozen, but a thin layer of ice. So she was, you know, obviously, you know, freedom's over there. I can't go back. I have to cross this and just take fate into your hands and do it. My goodness. So you mentioned uh, more than 2000 passengers on the on the railroad um, yeah. stayed at the Rankin house over the years. And at times, and this is according to your story, up to a dozen runaway slaves lived in this humble brick home, in addition to the 15 family members. I, I mean, you just wonder how 
how, how, how they did that. <laughs> you know, well, I think they did. such a such a large family. I think I read where they uh, they were heavily armed. You know, they're he's a pastor, but you know, they know the risks, and and sure. probably nobody dared approach that house because you know he had what I say thirteen kids or something, and and they knew how you know, to they, shoot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they were also committed to this cause that is incredibly beautiful. So, so when you're there, do you get that sense of awe? You do. You pull up you at the top and it's like a cliffside. So you approach the house from, I don't know if it'd be the back or the front, to be honest, because, you know, modern day it's for visitors. They might have. So, so you approach it facing the Ohio River, and what you get is this panoramic view of sky and clouds, because you're very high up overlooking a cliff, and you have this little red brick house, and the roof is really cool, too. It's made out of, like, wood shingles or whatever, and uh, so then, you you know, you get a tour of the house, but then when you come out the other side, you know, facing the, the hillside, there's a beautiful photo op where there are big stone steps that come up from uh, the hillside to the, maybe it's the front door, maybe it's the back door, I don't really know, um, of the house. And everything about the entire scene is majestic because when you're standing there on the top step, on the door step, and you look out, you see the in, the Ohio River Valley and the twists and the turns and the stones go down so far and then it's, you know, uh, uh, they've made, you know, stair steps where you could get down to the bottom and it's just, you know, it's just this one little house and there's nothing else around hmm. still today. You know, it's quite the scene where, you know, you just look and, and it just feels like, you know, if you came up from that river and in the daytime saw, you know, the view you would probably feel that you achieved freedom. Oh my goodness. But you know, in Ohio, they didn't really achieve freedom, even though we were um, a free state. There was, you know, some sort of act of Congress or whatever, where if you were an escaped slave, they could come into Ohio and, and free states, grab you and take you back. It was legal for them to catch you and do that if you were an escaped slave. Uh, so they actually had to get all the way to Canada. Jeez. Property. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's terrible, you know, to think about that. Right. But it considered prop human beings considered. Property. Right. That's right. They're it probably like, you know, they're. It was enacted into a law because they're treating it as stolen goods, you know. Wow. When it's human lives. Yeah. My goodness. So that's something that the John Rankin house is definitely a destination to put on our list of places to go. To yeah, it's get, really cool. Get inspired. It's just one of those little places with a profound story. And, you know, just from the views, you could bring a picnic blanket. There's plenty of green grass and you could overlook the Ohio River and, you know, have a good old fashioned day trip and picnic and Get some history while you're at it. This is Kate Jones. Thank you for listening to a portion of the Gale Hill Radio Hour. You'll find more excerpts on this YouTube channel and entire episodes on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts, iHeart, and other podcast directories. Mm -hmm.